You know, I've been asked a few questions by parents recently. As we've seen sports become more and more uh, in the lifestyles of children, which is great. But then I have parents asking me, you know, well, how much is too much? Um, how, how, how young is too young? What becomes the balance with parents and families? And, you know, they're going from not just cheer, they're going gymnastics and they got to play um, pole vaulting and then they got to do track and baseball and, you know, the, the list goes on. Do you have any kind of idea or perspective on sports? I mean, you started baseball at a really young age. Oh, yeah. I think we should start kids at six months and have them on every sport forever and ever, 24-7, <laughs> 365. And I think your whole work start should today. be spent on making money to pay for that. No, no, really. Um, I started, I remember uh, playing t-ball, you know, and I was probably seven, something like that. And Starting at that age is is late today. I mean, today kids are starting at three, three or younger, or younger, and then there's all this push or emphasis on it. And I can tell you this: you know, there's some benefits to that, and there's a lot of liabilities to that. And the liabilities, I don't think people think about, but benefits, obviously, you know, um, children being involved in team sports where it's not about, you know, there there's a dependence on you to do your job. And it's not all about you as a lone person. I think teamwork is good there. I think understanding that your coaches should be um, respected. In other words, people in authority, respect them. Um, and I think probably, too, uh, activity, you know, being better shaped today with – we've talked about this before with obesity in children being today, you know, like one in four. Yes, getting um, them moving is better than sitting at the TV or the – You bet. Um, Xbox playing – uh, without moving. Yeah, and I think learning to learning to win and learning to lose and handle both with respect and dignity and honor is a good thing, you know. So these are good things you get from it, but what I see today, the downside of it is is it stresses the parents out so much that it sort of catastrophically destroys their own health. I've seen that before. What am I supposed to do? I'm taking little Johnny these things and all I have is fast food. I'm thinking, well, you're creating that. It, what What is that tone setting for little Johnny with little Johnny as he becomes um, daddy Johnny and husband Johnny? And what's he going to do with his kids or her kids? I mean, it becomes a problem over time. And how many people are, you know, get right down to it. Are they doing that so that little Johnny gets a, um, an athletic scholarship or becomes professional? Because, look, that window is about that big. And one in what, a million or something like that? It's like not effectively the best goal to have. Although I appreciate what athletics has done in my life in helping me work through those things, those benefits. Today, I have a huge question about if that's wisdom to start your kids that early. And if that's wisdom to let little kids do everything that they want to do. And because right now we're not seeing that effectively play out towards good work product, right? The workforce, we're not seeing it uh, played out with good health either really today. So we definitely, when we're putting kids in sports, we want to maybe make sure they're doing one or two activities and not all of them. We want to make sure that it's likely not destroying the family unit. That's right. That we're not just running and gunning and not taking time as a family. It also sounds like the excessive amount of uh, engagement in activities for the young can destroy the nutritional intake of the young if we're just going through the drive through yep. to continue to get somebody to the next event without taking time for our health. Yeah, and I've seen this before, this story play out where, you know, the, the parents are split up. You know, you're taking them one way and I'm going in a different direction and we don't see each other except maybe in passing on a on a Sunday morning sometime. And I've watched the relationship between husband and wife get fragmented and destroyed by that. And I've seen this a lot too with little Johnny. I'm using little Johnny as an example. That little boy's busy and everything, by the way. We've <laughs> He's busy. He's a busy boy. You know, they're active and the, the metabolism in a child is different from adults. So, you know, little kids eating fast food may not show physical effects of disease processes, although they're getting them earlier yeah. today. Um, but you're seeing the parents suffer and they end up in our office. And they're wondering, what do I do? Because I'm running, I'm stressed out, I'm not getting sleep, and their health is getting horrific. And we've seen that happen with men and women, haven't we? 
We we certainly have. So I think the the balance is is choosing a couple. Yep. Sports per child, making sure that yeah, the parents' lifestyle stays intact and making sure that the parents are able to help that trickle down to the child so the child doesn't actually end up burnt out. Well, and from a parent standpoint, and probably it goes into personal standpoint, um, there's benefit to saying yes, um, but there's equal benefit to saying no. And sometimes we say yes too much because we don't want to deal with uh, the backlash of saying no. And that's to our kids. But sometimes the greatest lesson they can learn is how to handle no. And no is the best answer many times. It doesn't need to be the right answer, but use a little bit of wisdom out there a little bit. Because ultimately, if, we're, if we become chronic yesaholics, you know, which people are, that is a, is a major subject that kids learn. They don't learn how to deal with disappointments. They don't learn how to deal with no. Any good father, any good mother is going to learn how to say no appropriately. And if athletics or the cost they're in are, are just taking the, the complete focus away from your family and health, um, learn to say no and find some balance there. So if you're a parent out there and you need to find some balance in your life, we'd be glad to help. You can find us on Sherwood.tv. That's right, Sherwood.tv. And we can show you the way, maybe help you find that balance. When is too much too much for a child? Where do you put them? Which ones do you put them in? How do you find a healthy lifestyle for yourself as you're raising a family? We want to add life to your years and have health in your life. Let's get real. Most emergency food is just as bad for you as any other choice in the standard American diet. And that's just sad. We don't just need food. We need highly nutritional food. We don't just want to survive food shortages. We are meant to thrive in adversity. Complete your daily nutrition and have shelf-stable Kingdom Fuel as a cornerstone of your food supply. Don't sacrifice your health or your taste buds. Stock up on Kingdom Fuel now. Hello, I'm Kevin Sorbo. Now there's an old saying, it's not what you know, but who you know that matters. Now that's true in our careers, spiritual life, and when it comes to our health and overall well-being. Today, most of us know a lot of information about health and nutrition, but are we really doing anything with it? So here's what I've learned from working with Drs. Michelle and Mark Sherwood. They're the founders of the Functional Medical Institute. You need a wellness plan that's customized based on your unique needs. Now remember, Real change can only happen when you address the whole person. That is exactly what Mark and Michelle do, and why they are people you should know. They'll help you discover what you need to experience transformation. Find out at Sherwood.tv slash Sorbo. That's Sherwood.tv slash Sorbo, or just see the link below. Have a great day, and God bless. I could use your assistance. Okay. Um, Jesus. Huh? I, my name is Jesus. <laughs> sure. Jesus. Jesus is here today. You, uh, you looking for a job? Yes, sir. You and Mark have 45 days before the bank forecloses. Not to worry. They do not call me by God buyer for nothing. The collection plate starts to be passed around. Mark reaches into the basket and shouts, you and your family are the winner from the first church of the Lotto. Kind of think of it like a high stakes bingo night every Sunday. This video of the diaper is going viral right before our eyes. This is a miracle. What, what is? is Friends of Faith has over 300,000 followers. Oh my god! That's more followers than Moses had! Jesus! Take the wheel! Just say it. No, Stop take it. the wheel! I got it! I got it, buddy!